Hello, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Park. I'm Senior Research Associate for Collaborative Digital Research at the University of Toronto, um, Mississauga, UTM. I'm a settler who lives and works on the territory governed by Treaty 13 and the Williams Treaty on the eastern edge of Toronto. In my role at UTM, I coordinate and program the physical space when we can be in person. Uh, currently, everything is virtual and organize workshops aimed at supporting collaborative research practices in the humanities and social sciences. So these workshops range from tool-based. So we've done workshops around say our studio, various uh, packages in R, ggplot, et cetera, to the more methodological and theoretical, thinking about uh, how to take good care of data, how to share data, um, emphasizing data sovereignty practices, um, et cetera. I am trained as a scholar of contemporary Chinese art and visual culture, um, and my interest in data and research data management, data flows, workflows, everything, uh, all that good stuff, uh, comes out of a space of digital humanities. So in particular, I'm interested in looking at how augmented reality, uh, GIS data and performance, archival uh, performance photographs from the 1990s um, in Beijing uh, could be brought into a space where people could experience those performance photographs in situ. In 2016, I took up a postdoctoral fellows sponsored by the Council for Library and Information Resources CLEAR. Um, and this was my first opportunity where I, I learned more about carpentry. So carpentry's dat, carp carpentry's as an umbrella, so software carpentry, data carpentry, library carpentry. Um, and when I took up my uh, current position in 2019, I began to explore how to integrate carpentry's as a kind of, a, as a model, as a curriculum, and most importantly, a community, and how we might begin to be integrate this into the new space, um, the concept uh, that we're building at UTM. We fondly refer to it as Cedars, CDRS. Uh, we're right along the, the edge of the Credit River and there are lots of beautiful cedar trees, so it seems appropriate. So luckily uh, for me, U of T is a big place. We have three campuses. It can take uh, over two and a half hours to travel from um, the Scarborough campus on the Eastern edge of Toronto to my campus, Mississauga uh, in the Peel region. Uh, we have 93,000 students. We have 14,648 faculty members, uh, about 7,500 staff members and over 150 librarians. So it's a big place. Um, and what's really exciting about being at a big place is there's often somebody doing something related to what you want to do. You just have to find them. Um, and that actually happened uh, in the summer of 2019 when I uh, encountered a group of librarians who had um, applied for and been awarded uh, the Chief Librarian Innovation Grant to, in order to bring instructor training from Carpentries to U of T. Um, and after a quick email asking if it was open to members of the research services staff, um, I was allowed to, to join the uh, instructor training. So um, this has springboarded an unlikely and awesome uh, alliance between myself in the research office, so I report to the VP of research, and the head of metadata services, Mei Chan, um, in central libraries. So um, her work and her space is uh, typically um, in the back end. So the idea of us um, running into each other on campus um, really was, it was facilitated through Carpentries and through her team's um, bringing of Carpentries instructor training to U of T. So this unlikely and awesome alliance is something that I'm looking to uh, spark in my own space. So how can we spark this productive unlikeliness uh, that foregrounds discipline specificity uh, with computational data skills? So again, lucky for me, they're great models, uh, Paula, Tim, Deb are all thinking about ways in which to do that. Make sure you to watch their videos. Um, we might also uh, look to the University of Arizona that has implemented uh, the data ambassadors. Uh, there's an example at Virginia Tech, Emory, Rutgers. I'm really excited to learn more about the uh, successes, pinch points, ways to, to kind of move forward um, from all of the conversations that will hopefully come out of this panel. So currently at UTM, we're looking to identify stakeholders. So that would be IT, library, digital scholarship librarians, department chairs will be crucial, um, the graduate dean. Um, and this, of course, this work is all made easier by the concrete examples that I can point to outside of UTM. So while I'm just starting this journey to embed graduate students and postdoctoral fellows into paid fellowship positions at Cedars, um, I'm concurrently trying to use this as a chance to foreground student skill development, peer-to-peer -peer instruction, 
education is something that's really important to me in my own pedagogy. Um, and I want to embed that as well within the within Cedars with the data squad. Um, I'm looking to create these kind of unlikely alliances where really interesting conversations can happen at the at UTM. Uh, we have a strong graduate program in evolutionary biology, as well as uh, in geography among many um, departments that have graduate programs. Uh, but the idea I, I like to imagine the idea of a geographer sitting next to an evolutionary biologist uh, thinking through a data problem and trying to to imagine um, what conversations might come out of that and how that then could spark this kind of interesting um, meta conversation around data data skills. So in sum, uh, using Data Squad as a model, I'm working to draw on discipline expertise, uh, coupled with tech and data skills that in order to build and expand the, the collaborative digital research space community. So longer term, I'm hoping to offer carpentry uh, instructor training as a micro-credentialing opportunity and benefit for being a Data Squad member, along with a named fellowship as well as being paid, <clears throat> and possibly partnering with experts in experimental um, experiential learning at UTM, uh, thinking about how um, our data skills within the campus community could extend beyond uh, to community partners. For instance, we have a faculty member who's building a database of Italian uh, menus. How can we partner with uh, community members who might want to have access to that database to look at how um, Italian foodways have changed over time in our region, Peel region? Um, I also want to think about ensuring uh, that students have the con have concrete ways in order to make this uh, professional development visible on their uh, job documents. So if they're applying for other fellowships, if they're applying for postdoctoral fellowships, jobs, etc., uh, that they have uh, language to use on their CV, uh, giving support through writing uh, reference letters, uh, holding postdoctoral uh, sorry professional development workshops uh, for the cohort would be another way of extending the kind of long tail of uh, the data squad into the next step um, beyond um, the Data Squad Fellowship at UTM. Look forward to hearing more about what you're all thinking, ways in which we can uh, work together and strategize for Data Squads. Thank you.